Hello, uh, holy god, um, and welcome to, to Mondo's Cinemark. Um, now the other day, uh, I went down the, uh, the Phoenix Club, uh, just off Charing Cross Road in central London, uh, to talk to Graham Humphreys. Um, now Graham, if, if you don't know the name, uh, you almost certainly know, know the work, especially if you're a fan of, of horror cinema. Um, I mean, Graham's responsible for some of the most iconic imagery of the last, the last 30 years. Um, he's, he's responsible for this, for this, for this, and, and countless other pieces that, you know, arguably have, have completely superseded the films they were, they were ostensibly, you know, created to promote in, in, insofar as the, the cultural memory, what have you not, is concerned. Um, so I went and had a, had a drink with Graham uh, and I asked him, you know, this and that, and I'm going to present that uh, to you here now. Um, the first thing I asked was, I said to him, Graham, I says, I says, for fuck's sake, I says, I mean, you're responsible, as I say, for some of the most iconic imagery, uh, you know, in, in, in sort of, in, in, well, in, in modern horror. How did you get into that? I mean, what was the, what was the break at all, if there was a break? Um, and this is what he said. Uh, well, the break, you know, there, there was never any break per se. The, 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 the only thing that happened which makes me part of that sort of horror history, I guess, would be the visit to Palace Pictures one day uh, on the uh, advice of somebody who was saying, you know, well, you could go and see these people, go and see Artificial Eye, go and see Palace, go and see such and such, just independent companies, because I, I think at that point I knew that um, the work wasn't commercial. And uh, just luckily, luckily at that point, Palace Pictures, I'd never heard of before, and had only just released um, Diva, uh, had the Evil Dead, and uh, just luckily happened to be there at the right time. And they said, um, um, we've got this film, uh, which you'll probably quite like, because it was quite clear that I liked horror films. And um, so come along, see a screen at Scala, with just two of you, one other guy who's going to be also perhaps pitching ideas. Uh, he left within 10 minutes of the film because he's a bit frightened, I think. And, um, but yeah, from that moment, that's where the, the, sort of the horror thing really, really began. And um, everything else kind of tumbled along after that. Yeah, there's, a, there's a very distinctive uh, Graham Humphreys style. Um, I mean, I know it's been refined over the years, and you went back recently and, and, and redid the, the Return of the Living Dead yep. uh, piece, for example. But it is, I mean, even if you look back at something like Kindred or something like that, and look at some of your new stuff, I mean, um, the, the uh, Zombie Flesh Eaters piece that you did, I think it's some of your, I mean, it's, it's absolutely incredible, I think it's some of your best work. Um, what do you see as the through line there? I mean, I, I mean, when you look back at stuff like that, I mean, are you, are you just... Well, well interestingly, no. today I was putting together some sheets of uh, 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 collected works, um, mm. just a sort of little giveaway thing. Thing for an, uh, I think coming up soon, and um, especially looking at it, thinking oh, actually this is you know work from 1983 to 2013. It's quite you know quite a long period of time, and actually looking at it, when you look at all the stuff together, it actually to me it's developed. But um, to anybody else looking in, you think God, it's a distinctive look, and that's not intentional. It was never mannered, uh, um, controlled. It's just a natural thing, and it's basically what I do. And my approach from the very beginning was. Um, um, particularly growing up in a sort of, you know, coming up during the sort of punk period, I guess, was being very anti all the gloss and smoothness that had mm. gone before him. Uh, you know, uh, but I reacted against that because um, what I was into was very different, and uh, I, I, the airbrush technique, although I could see it was very technical and quite beautiful, uh, it wasn't what I thought life was about, and um, particularly the music I was listening to just didn't have that kind of gloss. And uh, what I wanted to do was. Um, I felt the textures that, uh, of the music and sounds, I, I think, more than anything else, that's all around me, and uh, uh, particularly punk rock, and, um, you know, just that really raw guitar sound and sort of tribal drumming, um, and you can't do that with an airbrush, it just needed uh, something a lot harder and coarser. Uh, I was lucky enough to go to um, Thailand when I was about 23, just on an off chance thing, uh, something I'd never considered doing, going to the east. But uh, uh, um, it was a very fortunate thing because suddenly uh, there was another world of colour, colours which I hadn't seen before, just combinations of colours which I hadn't seen before. And um, that really, really kick-started uh, 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 the sort of the palettes I use, and um, particularly with the Evil Dead, uh, that 
have suddenly, you know, just really pushed back to another mm. level in terms of um, spectrums. I mean, uh, 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 to me, the Evil Dead had to be the most unnatural combination of colours uh, in order to create that mood of, um, you know, unbelievable otherness, and uh, and that's what I've tried to do since. Um, and the textures, you know, still remain because, you know, the real world isn't smooth and glossy. And, uh, you know, particularly going through the Thatcher years and uh, you know, the encroaching hedge money from America, it's, you know, where everything's glossed and smooth and airbrushed and uh, retouched. I, I'm just, you know, Sorry, complete, complete rejecting that. Oh, okay. But they're here at half seven. Half past seven, okay. Well, we're probably going to be out by then anyway. Yeah, we'll be. Is it somebody important? It's not the Royals, is it, though? <laughs> A he or a she? <laughs> well, he's <What>? mostly <laughs> reserved. Yes. Yeah, we're going to be thrown out. Rupert, Rupert, one, oh. one, one stand for this, Graham. Be no. Um, I mean, uh, I'm sure you're again. I'm sure you're bored talking about this, but do you, do you want to talk about the uh, the again. Nightmare on Elm Street stuff? Um, I mean, it's some of the, again, it's some of the stuff you're most you're, you're most famous for. I mean, it's absolutely incredible uh, imagery, and you were with them right up to to part five and, and beyond. Did you work on Freddy's Dead at all? No. No. So, so do you want to talk about? I've almost purely through the Palace Pictures connection, which is the Evil Dead connection, and the, 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 uh, 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 the Palace Horror collection, and. Um, the Nightmare on Elm Street uh, series. I didn't work on number th worked on number three, but um, that was a, a photographic poster. And uh, uh, why that solution uh, was arrived at, I've no idea. I think there was a budget which you know, had to be met. Uh, they felt the film didn't merit uh, any bigger treatment than merely, you know, Robert England was now confirmed as a star just have a picture of Robert England. In fact, it's a very, very contemporary uh, way of thinking now with the pro any bloody film post you look at now, it's like, here's the star, that'll do. Well, I was actually um, going to ask why, you why about bother, yeah, you know, about Why bother with anything else? I was looking at a poster for um, Bates Motel, a new TV series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, a pretty boy, um, Bates Motel, What's that telling you? So he's a pretty boy, and it's called Bates Motel. Well, obviously, anybody knowing Bates Motel is going to know it's uh, you know the character from Psycho, and you think of all the stuff within that that could be applied. I mean, the, you know, the taxidermy, um, the, the madhouse, uh, he's a killer. But what's what's in that poster that's going to tell you that? I mean, you're just supposed to know the back history. What it's doing is it's being very lazy. It's just saying, actually, here's a pretty face, and that's good enough for you. Well, I find it quite insulting. You know, that's, this is the way campaigns are built now. There's built around pretty faces, uh, not ideas, concepts, textures, um, locations. Um, I went to see uh, Sol Bass's Phase 4 last night, the only film he directed. Yes. For Sol Bass, you know, amazing designer. Created those iconic posters for um, Hitchcock's films just, uh, and some amazing you know, opening title sequences. And uh, you know, you look at the poster for First Gun, I keep coming back to this poster because it is an astonishing piece of design work. But you look at that and you think, well, you know, that was then, we're a sophisticated audience apparently. Uh, and yet, you know, these decades later, this poster is too sophisticated for an audience now. I mean, you could not design that poster now and that would be a, a major film. Mm. Um, it might be some sort of ancillary bit of fluff which you, you know, sells a limited edition print or something, but um, you, know, you can't sell a film like that now because people are too bloody stupid, I think. Though. They're just, they have been just told that you know, a pretty face <laughs> is all you need. Yeah. Well, that's actually something I was, I was going to bring up to you. Um, I mean, I remember I mean, my first encounter with your work was through, through video rental uh, shops. Um, I mean, your stuff was absolutely fucking shrieking the minute you went into the place. I mean, you saw it. I mean, whether it be uh, Kindred it's or... It's Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know what I mean? I mean, it was just like, it was just kind of piercing you the minute you went in. That's obviously, that's not the case now. I mean, the, the work you're doing, I mean, I, I think you're working a lot with oral pictures mm. uh, and so on and so forth. Um, but that's kind of tailored to an audience that already kind of know, do you know what I mean? They already know well, it's the material. To an audience and, that would have been those people that went into ex that video exactly, shop. Exactly, exactly. So there's something hoping. lost there. I mean, do you think, is there something lost? And is there something lost for you that that doesn't exist anymore? Um. It's interesting because those films are, as you said, being tailored to people who would have seen those films as younger people or their films that actually weren't available at the time. And um, 
it's it's people who are now looking back at the stuff that really inspired them when they were younger and want you know to just see that stuff again and actually see it in the manner it was meant to be seen to start with rather than you know some dodgy you know, 12th generation grainy grungy video mm. uh, with you know shit sounds but um uh, it's interesting that actually revisiting that era and doing the stuff I do I feel that I'm actually able to do my work um, with a lot more confidence than I could have done then. Uh, so, for instance, the, the covers you're talking about, which you would have seen in the 80s on those shelves that I may have painted, um, you know, I was still quite uh, nervous about what I did and not very confident and uh, experimenting still, really, but mm. just trying to you know, find my way. And also, you know, there were people who at the time went to show my folio to many video distributors and uh, you know, quite a few of them said well we can't use this because um, you know, we do this kind of stuff and they pull out you know, sort of American de uh, video covers, you know, sort of glossy, airbrushy type things and lots of happy teenagers marking around and um, I was thinking well why would I want to work for you anyway, bye, <laughs> just go, but, uh, but yeah there was a lot of rejection at the time and I did actually go through a big crisis of uh, is what I'm, is what I, I, am I doing this wrong, is it just, it, you know, have I not got this, is, the world changed at that point that actually what I was trying to do is no longer relevant mm. but you know I stuck with it and I think that I'm glad I did because I think you know as I said it's, it's the world view is still correct that actually life is not glossy it's not shiny and you know it's not full of airbrushed people despite the posters you'll see on the underground <laughs> So, I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting there, you mentioned then uh, about, you know, being nervous about the work you were doing, you know, in the early, early 80s and, and maybe the, you know, the, the, the distributors rejecting that work. Is there not a sense that Graham Humphreys is, is a brand of a sort? And they, they, they kind of come to you and you can do whatever the fuck you want because, you know, you've kind of... Uh, do, do you know what I mean? Um, I know what you're saying, but uh, um, in my head, no. Uh, other people might perceive that, um, but that's not the way I view it. And I, I certainly don't want to think there's a little corner, which is just my corner. I mm. think that, uh, you know, there are other people who do much better work than I do. And, uh, you know, I, I acknowledge that completely and utterly, though I'm still learning, still trying to be better in what I do. But at the same time, never trying to lose what it was that actually sparked me to start with. Um, you know, you can take things to a sort of a degree of finish, which um, is technically fantastic, but is it still, you know, does it still have that energy? Is it still fresh? Is it still um, slightly distressed and distressing? You know, I quite like things to be not quite there and yet yeah, it's, it's it's almost like film works as well good film it's all about suggestion uh creating atmosphere it's not about the literal forensic mm. detail um and that's what i'm trying to retain is that, that sort of uh, uh, um, disdain can we say for detail and just uh this idea that everything's sort of a, 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 a intangible atmosphere it's just the a taste of the experience and um giving you something which is not saying this is it, but it's actually this is what might be there. Um, but you know, it's all about stimulating the imagination, mm. and um, if that means the use of colour, uh, the use of brush strokes, um, the juxtaposition of images, then whatever it has to be to do that is what's important for me.